get us started, I want to really talk about titles first. So what is it that we're looking at today? What's our big topic of conversation? Pros and cons of coal mining processing. Oh, that was nicely said. So based on our titles, we're looking at pros and cons of mining coal. <coughs> and thinking about coal, coal is one of those fossil fuels. And what are our three fossil fuels? What are our three fossil fuels, Sam? Um, coal, oil, and oil. Okay, and so we yesterday we really kind of looked at what are the differences between coal, uh, oil, and natural gas. So today we're focusing just on coal, but keeping in mind that um, our fossil fuels are very similar in the fact that they're all natural resources. But why are they considered so valuable? What, what, are, we, what are we using fossil fuels for that they're so valuable to us? Yeah, we use them for energy, electricity. More than just the electricity for our house, what other places do we use our fossil fuels for? For us. Cars. In our cars. Any place else we can think of? Like heat. Yeah, heat. So we obviously are using fossil fuels um, in many different ways or in many cases um, of using energy. So keep in mind that even though it's still part of fossil fuels and an important um, natural resource, we're strictly going to focus on just coal and mining coal today. So just as your title said, we're going to really look at how we actually mine coal. We know that it's we get it from earth through mining, um, but more importantly, what is that process really like? Because we didn't get a chance to see that yesterday. And then I want you to be able to tell me at the end um, of these two pages in our notebook, is it really worth mining coal and what we get out of coal for our energy um, versus the land effects that it actually has? So is the profit, is the energy that we obtain um, a good trade-off or worth it for the, the environmental issues that are causing? Okay. Yesterday, I mentioned to you that we were going to have a special guest in here. Does anybody remember um, where our special guest is oh, no. from? Oh, I didn't know your mom was there. That's very nice. So, Loyola. And I'll, and I'll kind of let uh, Dr. Ganim take it away and introduce himself and, and talk a little bit about mining coal with you. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. I am a scientist, and a particular kind of science I do is called physics. So people also refer to me as a physicist. I work at Loyola University, where I'm a professor of physics. So I teach college classes, and I also do uh, research in physics. Uh, physics is um, something you might take a class in when you get to high school. And it uh, talks about the very fundamental things in nature. Uh, we talk about electricity and magnetism and how it works, and motion, and light, and heat. And one thing we talk a lot about is energy. And coal is a way that we get energy. Uh, there are different ways of getting coal, but you have to get it out of the ground somehow. Uh, there's a couple ways of doing this. One is through what they call strip mining, where they literally you know, take away the surface of the earth and they get it out of the ground that way. Uh, the other way, some of it's pictured here, is where they dig tunnels into the earth. And you can kind of see in these pictures here, they, through these tunnels they bring in big machinery. And uh, here you see um, uh, coal being loaded onto a dump truck. Obviously, they need large amounts of coal to provide all the energy that we use. Uh, it's a difficult process, and it costs energy to get energy. Okay, this is one of the things about getting energy. Uh, all, these, uh, all this equipment here uses energy. It takes people, labor, uh, and it, it damages the land as well. And that's what the lab is about today that you'll be working on. All right. So you are going to be hired by the CEOs of the adults in this room, because we are the money-making CEOs, yes. to find out a little bit about why you are hired. Can I get a volunteer to read your main task? Let's see. A good effort from you. Nice and loud. This is your Your own understanding or 
hired, but what are you actually hired to do? What did that paragraph tell you that you're going to be doing and working in? Aziza? I want to see how obtaining coal can um, impact your environment. Good. So as we get coal from Earth, does that profit, does that money that we are actually making and the energy that we get from that coal really outweigh the environmental issues, that land damage that's, that's caused? Okay? <laughs> So in order to get a little bit more insight into what you're going to be doing in lab, you can see towards the bottom half of the paper where it says modeling the effects of coal mining. I'm going to have you read carefully on your own, but as you read the directions on your own, I need you to do two things. I want you to identify anywhere that you have to record in a chart. There are two different charts, so make sure that you are underlining where you are recording in a chart. The second thing that I want you to do is to make sure that you circle any lab equipment that you're going to be using during lab. Now, if you see that lab equipment repeat, you don't have to circle it more than once. I just want you to be able to identify the different tools that you're going to be using during lab. So on your own right now, read through, underline um, anywhere that you have to put information into a chart, and then circle anywhere that you see lab equipment that will be used. Okay, so I'll give you a minute or two to do that, and then we'll come back and talk about it. Thinking about our lab equipment, what kinds of tools are we going to be using? What's a tool we're going to use? <coughs> the forceps. Okay. What are, anybody know what forceps are? Oh, yes. Remember how I said in science we sometimes like to be more fancy pants about our tools and terms and definitions than we really need to be? What are these? Tweezers, okay? So forceps is that fancy pants way of saying tweezers, okay? So each pin will have um, one pair of tweezers for you to use, so you may decide who wants to use them and divvy them up between you and your partner. All right, what other tool do we have in there? What other tool? What else, Al? The dissecting probe. This one is my <coughs> favorite. Does anybody know what a dissecting probe actually looks like? What does it look like? Sort of. It actually looks like it has a needle at the end of it. Okay, you may have used them before. Um, if you haven't, it's sharp. So keep in mind, we are dissecting a two or something in class, but we are not dissecting each other. So even though you're tempted, Jabria, to be poking people with the dissecting probe, please refrain from doing so. It's only used to dissect what? What are we dissecting? A cookie. A cookie. So the only place that I should see this dissecting probe going to, touching, is going to be the actual cookie. Okay? So you've already named a third tool that we have, and that's the uh, material that you have in lab, and that's going to be your cookie. No, you may not eat the cookie. Let's think logically. It is in a lab bin and it's going to be poked and prodded with a dissecting probe and forceps that have been used to dissect other things. Do you want to eat it? No. I knew somebody was going to say that. However, however, because you have a fabulous, wonderful, fabulous, wonderful, let me repeat that one more time, fabulous and wonderful Thank you, Ms. Clark. I did think about you, and I did get extra cookies. So if you are fabulous, wonderful, and I know. If you're fabulous, wonderful, and great in class and during lab, I will make sure that you get a cookie on your way out today. Okay? So refrain from eating the lab cookie. Okay? All right. Any other tools that are in there? What else? Oh, the phone. Yes. Your phone can be used for two things. You can use it to keep track of time. Okay? If you do not have a phone to keep track of time, you may use the clock, and I think I have one extra stopwatch timer in here, but if you have a phone, you're more than welcome to take it out during that time. Not right the second, but during that time. You can also use it, flip your paper over to the other side. When you are completing lab,
towards the end, you are going to have to do some calculations. You can also use your phone to calculate in chart two. Okay? Leave it on this side for just a second, but is there any other tools that we are forgetting? What's another tool? You're going to use a massing scale, and feel free whenever it's time to use them. Just go ahead and use them on your own. If you happen to put your books um, somewhere by them, just make sure that they're out of the way. But there's one over here. There's one over here, and then there's another one over here on the green table. You can use any one that you uh, feel like using. If there's an issue with the scale, there are three adults in this room that can help you um, re-zero it or make sure that it's on the right track. Well, I just said that you can't have that over there, so can you please remove it? And it's even more removed in just a minute. Okay. All right, the last tool that you're going to have in there is going to be sheets of paper. Okay. This is where you are going to be actually dissecting your cookie and then placing the um, chocolate chip pieces on there. And what do the chocolate chip pieces represent? Coal. 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 Okay. Coal is what it represents. I actually want to direct you down to, um, actually let's start with chart one. I had you underline anywhere that you are recording data in chart one because you are recording data a lot. And I know you, and I know the way that brain thinks. A lot of times you want to just hurry up, get through the lab, go through the steps, and you forget that important piece, and that's recording what you're doing during lab. Okay, so please make sure that as you're going through the steps, whenever it says record in chart one, that you're recording that data. You don't want to miss that step, because when you go down to chart two, if you are missing any of those steps, then you're not going to be able to do the correct calculations. And remember, the main goal of this is to really see, does that profit that we make outweigh that land, land damage that we actually cause. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're not skipping any of those steps. All right, flip back now to your directions, and I just want to gear you down to F, G, and H, and then I promise I won't talk anymore, and I will let you go. You have to mask three things at the end. How many half sheets of paper am I giving you? Two. How many? Two. 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 Okay. So since you have to mask three different things and you're using the piece of paper to help you collect your materials and mask them, you may have to shimmy a few things around, okay? So maybe you want to put all your materials on one sheet and then whatever you're masking, just transfer that over as you're masking it, okay? And then move everything back over the one sheet, transfer whatever material you have to mask the second time, okay? All right, any questions before I let you go? During lab, you will have about, let's shoot for about 12 minutes so we have enough time to do our calculations and everything at the end, and I want to be able to close up some of the things we found with our land um, damage versus that profit. So about 12 minutes. When you finish lab, you do not have to ask me, but when you're done massing your cookie, you can dump the cookie crumbles into the trash, and then you can recycle the pieces of paper, okay? And then just put your lab equipment back up here. And I'll try to give you reminders through lab throughout lab as time frame is kind of dwindling down. You look like you're ready for a race. <laughs> okay. All right. If there's no other questions, you can send one person back to grab your lunch permit. Um, <laughs> 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 you Would you count these? Yes. <laughs> Mask the cookie on the half sheet of paper. Wait, we have to mask it. Why is it here? Five. 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 You just recounted. No, I, I didn't count. I know. Now you made me lose the count. I thought they needed a big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're really separating that coal from earth. You're making me money. I can't have all that earth and The next one is. Use the four steps in a dissecting probe to mine your cookie. As you mine, separate your chocolate chips from your crumbles so you don't mind your chocolate. Um, we're dissecting a cookie. This is representing the coal and then um, the yellow, I mean, not the, I mean the cookie. The earthy part is like representing the earth. <coughs>
you can also use the clock over there, too. You keep your... Okay. It takes like forever. I told you. I didn't know. I told you just to separate them. I see people destroying my earth. Ow. Sorry. Yeah, you're gonna cost me land damage. You were gonna owe me lots of money. Oh, and you just his thumb is just falling into the depths of the earth's soul. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, we didn't do that. Careful. We, we're pretty bad, but we didn't do that. I'm going. Good view, Chloe. Right. 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 You might be able to, like, loosen that. You have to have to You gotta, like, scrape it. Yeah, we yeah. just scrape it. And then we try to grab it. Oh. I got it. I got it. Oh, yeah. I just pulled it out. Good. I'm not cleaning now. Okay, get dirty cool. In California. We're using, we're using the face mask as like, as like, like, like you know how that's a little, kind of like an extraction tool. So, and now you just use this like, I'm going to have one sheet of paper and a sheet of chocolate chips. And that's going to be what you sell the coal. And then we're going to weigh that separately from the other sheet of paper. And that's the chocolate chips. And you'll throw those away. And then you'll mask the uh, big pieces. And then you'll mask the crumbs. Yes, yes. So you want that separate. And then you'll, you'll throw that away after you mask it. Then you'll mask the remaining cookies. So, wait, are the crumbles laid? And then you'll mask the crumbles. Okay, so you want, you want three things. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so you want three things. The remaining cookies, the crumbles, and the all right, those are three, two, one. I want everybody's eyes up here for just a minute. I know that we're all in different places, but I want to give you two directions. So wait. <laughs> Nobody should be touching anything. I want to see no equipment in here. All right. Because of time, I want to have a few minutes to kind of close things up. I realize that most of you will not get to your calculations today, and that's fine. But I would like to at least start to make some predictions about the differences that you saw with the groups. You know, is a group that created a lot of land damage going to make as much money as, say, a group that um, kept Earth pretty intact? Okay, so I want you to start thinking about that. How many of you still need to actually mask the second time around? Okay. I'm going to say that you have one minute, listen very carefully, before you start jumping up and doing anything. This, I'm on ready for a race. You're going to have one minute to finish any massing that you need to do. And how did I say that we're cleaning up today? What's that process? I'm going to raise my hand. So you're going to dump all of the cookie into the trash and then you can recycle the paper, okay? Since we are talking about Mother Earth and things, I think we should make sure we recycle, recycle the paper, okay? So one minute to do all of those things, that's not very much time. In that minute also, please make sure that you are putting your lab equipment back in here and back in the back, okay? Here we go. Yeah, make sure you put the lab equipment back and you are finito. Oh, there. You got to go away to have you. You got it. You got to go away to have you. 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 You got to go away
actually close up some of the things uh, for today. Anybody want to share what they believe was taking place in that? Well, if you want, you're more than welcome to kind of point out and call on people. Um, anybody want to share what they think was taking place in that? <coughs> we were we were seeing how much how how hard it is to get the coal away from the land and how much cost and cost that you get after how much you get not as much energy as the cooking of the land. And you want to explain what how how that is well you were able to do that in your group? Well not well Okay. But I'm we did it. You, not us. Okay, so I'm picking on Sam because Sam was one of those groups that I went by. And um, how much actual solid cookie did you have left? 0.9 grams. Okay. <laughs> how many of you had way more as a solid piece than Sam? Did? Okay. So who, who do you believe is actually going to make more money? The people who have more land left. And why is that? What is there, there's an extra cost that's kind of embedded in there. Um, what it, what's the cost? What's the cost of, they say, you said? Land damage. Land damage. So the more that you actually damage the land, the more you have to pay. Do you think that that really is out there in existence? Yes. Yeah. So if you're somebody who's going to be mining for coal, you can't just say, I'm going to go here and mine, and not expect that as you're damaging earth that you aren't going to have to pay some cost <coughs> for that. Okay? So I'm going to kind of turn it over to uh, Dr. Gannon, and I remember at the beginning you were talking about that trade-off. Yeah, the, the trade-off uh, between the cost of doing this, so you only get paid for what you have at the end, the, the number of chips, uh, but it costs you both in labor and in damage, and uh, the more uh, skill you have, you know, the, the faster you can mine that without damaging the land, the more money you're going to have left over, right? Uh, the, um, uh, so that's what you have to think about when you're doing this. Now, since there is just about a minute or so, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, when they go and mine the land and they mm -hmm. dig all the tunnels, do they put the stone back or no? That's a good question. I've never they, seen them do that before. Do, do, they they put the, do they put what back? Like the, the stuff that they dig out? Uh, no, no. And those <laughs> tunnels they stay there. Uh, and, and they do collapse. Sometimes these abandoned coal mines collapse. Sometimes fires start underground in these abandoned coal mines, and they burn for many years. I heard that there was a landslide in Kennecott last month. Okay. Yeah. Related to coal mining? Or yeah, something? Yeah. yeah, sometimes the damage can take uh, linger long after they've abandoned the mud. Does anybody have any separate questions about um, Loyola or his profession or anything related to that? He just really have about 30 seconds, and I'll make sure I get you your cookie on the way out. Is there any last minute questions that you might have? You guys did a really nice job today. I appreciate it. Please make sure that you take this. And you put it in the pocket of your I and B so that we have